We are live and I am so happy about this evening's show. We are going to Winnipeg. Why Winnipeg? Because we are going to meet this woman, Stephanie Staples. We're going to actually go through three generations of Mo Mondays in Winnipeg. Winnipeg has a storied history uh, in Mo Mondays and you're going to meet them all. Stephanie Staples, Maurice and Tracy, and new generation Louise and Mel. So stay tuned, we'll be right back. <laughs> Okay, we are back and I am so excited to welcome you to this episode of Mo TV. In a minute, I am going to introduce, you probably already know her, but I am going to introduce you to the founder of Mo Mondays Winnipeg in Winnipeg. She's the one who started it all. If you've heard the Mo Mondays legend, you're the one, you, you know she's the one who twisted my arm and said, Michelle, we need Mo Mondays all over the country and you're gonna that's right she twisted my arm let's yeah. bring her on and say hello to the one and only stephanie staples oh, hey right. i feel like i should do a trick or something now you should do a trick or something now that's right everyone can see you now stephanie you can't see because it would confuse you because facebook has a a seven second lag or so but you're on and you're live. So welcome. Nice, nice hoodie, by the way. Sorry? Nice hoodie. I know, I know. I'm not sure it's really figure flattering, but it, but it's all about the Mo, so it's all It's good. all, do you want to tell people what that is? The two, my what shirt? does it say in case they can't read it? You meet the nicest people at Mo Mondays. Absolutely. Because you do. You do. Because the people attracted to this event are like cool, progressive, positive people who want to make themselves better and want to make the world a better place. We so, don't let anyone else in. Yeah. Well, well we let everybody in. You know that. So first <laughs> no, of all, before, nice. b while we, hang on a second, Stephanie, I just want to tell everybody who's watching, listening, that please post some comments. Let us know the sound is working. Let us know the, you can see us clearly. Let us know you're in a happy frame of mind. Let us, and, and post any, no guarantees that I'll actually have the frame of mind speaking to be able to do everything all at once from my little vantage point here. Oh, already, yeah, Tracy says looking great. Awesome. Yvette Raposo, Mo Mondays is awesome. Uh, sound is good. Awesome. Thank you for telling me. I think it was three Mo TV episodes ago. I was 10 minutes into the show and the light was flashing with messages. And I would say, no, I'm not going to distract myself and start looking at what people are trying to tell me. Well, what they were trying to tell me was that the sound wasn't working. Back to Stephanie, now that we know everything's fine. What time is it where you are? It is 5.06. So you are yeah. clearly not in Winnipeg. I am not in Winnipeg. Do you want to? I, I think everybody who knows you knows where you are, but for the benefit of everybody else, just say where you are. I am in, on Vancouver Island. In beautiful Vancouver Island where the Canada. weather never gets anything close to what it gets in Winnipeg. Am I... That's a venture of a so guess different. there. I have nothing bad to say about Winnipeg. I love Winnipeg. Winnipeg's home. Um, but this is this is my new home for now. Well, I remember when you were going through all your mental anguish and agony as to whether you should make this change and move and you love all the people in Winnipeg and all of this stuff. And then you took a trip out to Vancouver Island and you say, yep. But you know what? Mo Mondays was one of the hardest things to give up. For sure. When I moved out here, that was a big, it's easy to give up things that you don't like, but it's not, it's not hard to give up things that you, you still love. So that was a, that was a, a big lesson also. So that's what I want to talk about. I want to talk about you, Mo Mondays, and like, do you know you're written, you, your name is in 
the like the operations manual that every mo host gets. <laughs> Don't do what she did. <laughs> <laughs> so just for the benefit of everybody, if they haven't heard the Mo Mondays legend, the short version is I started Mo Mondays on the second floor of a tea shop in 2012. Uh, 18 people in the audience, half of which were the speakers, the other half was the serving staff. Three months later, they kicked us out because we weren't bringing in enough business. It was just a tea room, no microphone, no stage, no, no backdrop, no food, uh, nothing. And uh, no wonder they kicked us out. And then three months later, we went, so we went to a, a jazz bar. What do they have in a jazz bar, Stephanie, that they don't have in a tea room? Booze and jazz. <laughs> real food, real backdrop, real stage, real audio, real lighting, and yes, real alcohol. And uh, <laughs> did I answer wrong? <laughs> <laughs> no, you, you you got it right. You got it right. Anyway, so uh, there we are, and we made a few other changes. I started. Seeing in the first three months of doing Mo Mondays at the tea room, I saw everything I never wanted to see again, and I started putting in rule. That's when we rules like in guidelines, like I said, no selling, no teaching, no preaching, no pitching, and that's when the audiences started to grow. And about three months after that, I get a call from Ms. Staples, who said, "Do you remember what you said?" How are you? <laughs> Well, why isn't this in everywhere? That's what you said. And I said, Stephanie, I'm not in any position to do Mo Mondays anywhere else. And you said? Well, I can do it here. <laughs> and you also added one more thing. You also said, and you're going to help me. <laughs> and I said, I said, no. And you said, yes. And I said, no. And you said, yes. And I said, no. And you said, yes. And finally... Because Sounds you're like all of our conversations. Like, like most of our conversations. So take me back to that time, Stephanie. What was going through your head when you said, I want to do Mo Mondays in Winnipeg? I think for me, I was just looking for something that was positive and productive and, and attracted like-minded people who, like I said earlier, trying to make themselves a better person and try to make the world a, a better place and to just a place for these people to congregate where, like you said, it wasn't about selling or pitching or networking or, you know, trying to get something, trying to make money out of it. It was just about bringing people together and, and sharing people's stories and learning and being inspired and being motivated and leaving happy. And yeah, I think the world is just waiting for this. 2012 November was your first one. By the way, that shot that we had right at the very beginning, oh, you don't, you can't see it. That I thought, shot, I thought, yeah, the other day. That, that shot is Stephanie at, at her first Mo Mondays. Do you remember that one? Oh, I, boy, do I remember that one. <laughs> <laughs> November 2012. Tell me about it. What was that like? So it was really, it was fabulous. I mean, I, I had a community in Winnipeg, which is, was already nice, right? So as a motivational speaker, I already had a community of people. So people had no idea what Mo Mondays was, of course, because I really didn't. But, but luckily they knew me and they were pretty sure that whatever I was doing, it was going to be fun and inspiring. So, so that was really nice. So um, ours was also in a coffee shop and we had about 50, 50 people. Um, kind of lined up at the door, but it was a terrible snowstorm that day. And um, as we are, as we started, I see, I see somebody walk out like in the middle of somebody's talk. And I'm like, well, that's kind of weird. And I knew this person that was not like this person to do that. And she comes back and she whispers to me, Stephanie, they're towing cars away so that the uh, snow plows can get by. So I just remember standing there like, and somebody was talking and it was like, I, I, I literally didn't even wait for her to finish her talk. I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. I have to interrupt you because they're actually towing the cars away. So you have to go move your cars right now. 50 people all get up. They all leave, move their cars and they all came back, which was really wonderful. So that was a very unique way to start. But, um, so you know, it's an it, So what's interesting, Stephanie, is this, this, idea this notion of minor catastrophe on your first one 
in Winnipeg. That's that we're gonna hear. That's a recurring theme in Winnipeg. <laughs> you know, catastrophe is a it's a large word. I don't know. Minor. I said minor catastrophe, but it yeah. but it all bodes well because you went. I remember when you were busting at the seams. That was Sam's place. Sam's place. Yes. Is that still going? Yes. Yeah. Far as I know. Um, they loved they loved having us there, and we loved being there. And I remember how crowded it was. Oh yes. When you were there. We it was like a, a bookstore, and they literally moved bookshelves out of the way, and people were standing room only. I think we uh, eventually jammed eighty people into that place before we finally had to make the decision to move. But it was a great vibe. You had a great community. Where did you go to after that? Um, after we tried the comedy club. And we tried a theater and we, yeah, they weren't, they weren't quite right. And we do you want me to talk about where we ended up or? Yeah. We ended up at a, at a dinner theater place that, that was dark on Mondays, which is perfect. Um, and they welcomed us with open arms. They had a beautiful stage and they, um, so people in, in Winnipeg would know celebrations, dinner theaters. So the stage changes every couple months with their new play. So and, sometimes- And, and so theaters. again, you can't see this, but that stage is in my background right now. I okay. don't know, it, it's, I, I don't know if that was a month where you were at it, maybe uh, Maurice and Tracy, if you, if you know what month this, or if you recognize it, let people know. But yeah, I, I spoke there, I think once or twice and or I, I watch the video every single month. And yet every single month, it was a different backdrop. So sometimes we were in a jail. Sometimes we were in a boat. Sometimes we were in a park. Like it was always- A cafe. So it was once a Star Wars or a, or a Star yeah. Trek theme for yeah. one of them. Yeah, it was, it was fun. And it was a, he was a big place. So it held, you know, 350 people. So it really totally changed the, the vibe of everything from being this intimate, coffee shop to really it turned into a show which I actually was really trying to resist but but it, it actually became almost a variety show is what I would say by the time I was done with it well and so your influence on Mo Mondays is indelible I don't is that the right word Let's it won't go away <laughs> yeah. is that what you mean? it won't it will never go away it's that's exactly it you have brought, you have brought so many, in fact, we're going to do a whole show just with you. So let's hold some things back, Stephanie, because <laughs> there are so many things about the innovations that you brought to Mo Mondays that we still do to this day. For example, you were the first one to bring in a musician. Yes. And I remember you told me about the idea. I said, ah, I don't know if it's a gonna, good idea. You know, it'll detract from the stories and you know. yeah. Silly me, you know, that was one of the, one of the better things. You know, Michelle, I didn't even know because my idea was to have music playing like live musician while people were coming in, getting settled. What I didn't expect people to come in 45 minutes early and sit quietly and listen to the music. Like I wasn't, that's not what I meant it to be. So okay. it, it, I like many things, it morphs into its own kind of thing. So let's, you, you, you've been, other than me, you've been hosting Mo Mondays longer than anybody. Just get memorable moments. I know well, that's hard, but. We tried twice to break the Guinness world record for most hugs in what, a what, minute. What, what, we're good. what, what, other than that? Oh, oh, <laughs> um, well, I, I wanted to do a major. So we also um, did fun. I partnered with a not for profit every month, so we did a different fundraiser. But I wanted to do a huge fundraiser, and so I I figured people would pay money if the, I shaved off my hair. So I my long shoulder length hair. We we did a right down to the wood uh, shave, and we raised almost seventeen thousand dollars. I know when children. I saw that, I thought that was amazing, and I thought I should try that. <laughs> no. <laughs> Maybe you could grow your hair. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't grow in the, in the right places. It's already growing all the way down my back and everywhere else, but not on my head. I don't know. Anyway. TMI. TMI. Yeah, yeah. So more, more memorable moments. 
we, as I said, it turned into like much of a variety show. So we had, in addition to the stories, in addition to the music, we have like a sort of an entertainment component. So we had um, aerial acrobatics, like with the whole drapes coming down oh, and the I people curling up. We had a deaf mime troupe, which was just out of this world. We had numerous of our shows translated in, in Yes, that's right. Translate, uh, interpret it. Into interpreted American. with sign language. I remember that. Yeah. So those were those were really really special moments. Can you think of a big impact that you've had? Maybe it was on a speaker. Maybe it was someone in the audience. Maybe it was just in the community at large. Other than these big huge events that you think of a. Well, one of the things I kind of prided myself on is like I'm a good like talent spotter and story or story finder. And so I, you know, I'd meet, I talk to lots of people. I meet lots of people. I know lots of people. So I would kind of say, Hey, I think, you know, you would be great here. And they'd be like, no, 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 no. And I would, I would, when I knew that they had it, um, like I would stay on them literally for years, like some people like four years and then before they finally took the stage and everybody, nobody ever finished their story and said, oh, I wish I didn't do that. Everybody was like so grateful for the opportunity and so appreciative and so thankful. And, you know, just even developing their story, it's just such a, it's a game changer for so many people. So that was, that was one of the best parts for me. And what I really miss, probably what I miss the most is giving people that opportunity to, to shine. I, I have to tell you, that's one of my things as well. Being able, you know, there's somebody that you notice who keeps coming back over and over again, but they're quiet and maybe they sit at the back and they try not to call attention to themselves. But I, I as the host, and I bet you as a host, you, I see them from stage and, you know, tap them on the shoulder. You, I know you've got, I don't know you, but I know you've got a story. And, and it means so much to them, like to be noticed and to be heard and to be believed in. Because we have all had people that believed in us more than we believed in ourselves. So to be able to be that person for other people is, is really a treasure. You know what? For the people who are watching and listening to this, if you want to put in the comments some memorable uh, moment or some, an experience like that, that would be amazing. Um, I can hear, and this is great to see who's coming over the speaker of my SUV. Is that right? Did I read that right? I don't know. Okay. I'm going to play a clip, Stephanie. I'm going to play a clip, and we're going to talk about it after. All right? You ready? I'm, I'm going to hopefully play, press the right button. Ready? All right. Three, two, one. Up. Two, three, four, five. Okay, you heard that, Stephanie. I did. So, one, first of all, I mean, I had so much video footage to look through in picking something for that we were going to talk about, but I figure the one thing that we absolute cannot, absolutely cannot do during this time of lockdown is hug each other. I know I miss that, the mo hug. Mm -hmm. Bring me back to that moment in that room when you were doing that like why why would you like oh again because this is like count on stephanie to even think of something like this 
So one of my other things that I really loved about Mo Mondays is that it wasn't like, it wasn't, I didn't feel like it was me putting on a show for everybody. Like I really wanted it to be an experience for everybody. So during every show, I would do something that would pull the audience in physically with their voices, like something that wasn't just about them being a passive listener. That was, there's a place for that for sure. But I wanted to, them to be part of the show. So that's kind of how the idea came about. It's like, oh, wouldn't, wouldn't it be cool? Like I've never been part of trying to break a record before. And I bet 95% of the people in that audience have never been a part of that. Wouldn't it be cool if we could try? Like, so that we did or didn't, I would have, yes, it would have been cool if we did it. We missed it by just a few hugs. Um, but it was more about creating that experience, right? Getting people up out of their chairs, lined up. And, and if you can see in that video, there was one lady kind of pushing people like toward me. Like she just did that on her own. She just took that upon you didn't herself. You did coach her to do that. Orchestrate people. Amazing. But tell the truth, Stephanie, you just wanted hugs. <laughs> well, I do like hugs. I was not prepared for how exhausting that would be. And I think you can see in that video, like I practically collapsed. You collapse like, at, at the, the end. end. You it's collapse true. at the end. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. It was really, it was only a minute, but it was very exhausting and you can't really practice that kind of thing. Right. So it's not like I had trained hugging training or anything, but uh, yeah. So as you mentioned that we can't hug right now, it's such a sad, sad thing. All right. Those so lots of memorable moments, shaving your head, the hug -a -thon, uh, you did something else that I can't remember where I, I had it in my notes and now it escapes me. Some, you did so many cool things. You brought on the, you, you incorporated the music into this show. You had this stage that changed every single month. That was pretty amazing. Um, you had some you've like seen... strict dogs there. That was kind of a cool show. What's well, that? That one was for a shelter. That the fundraiser was for a shelter. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, that was kind of different. Yeah. There are so many things that you did and you have so many great memories. And you know you had an impact, not just because, you know, we mix in professional speakers with people who have never spoken on stage before. And even the professional speakers have this amazing transformation because we ask them to do something slightly different than they're used to for their corporate audiences. You can't go through something like this without being impacted yourself. Would you agree with that? You can't even do it once without being impacted. <laughs> so talk to me about this, the transformation of Stephanie as, as a result of doing all that Mo hosting. Well, professionally, it turned me into a, from a, from just a professional speaker into a professional MC. Cause I, I feel very competent to be able to do that, to be able to create an experience for audiences that as an MC, it's a completely different skill set of which I didn't have at all any experience when I started. So I think I left professionally much, much stronger than, than when I came in. But personally, I actually would uh, give the nod to my husband, who when I started in the coffee shops, often didn't even attend. And by the end, he was bringing people to their seat, like, walking people to their seats and he was he was like the host and and he had a real transformation I think which really affected our relationship positively and sometimes the ladies would say to me oh, Randy walked me to my seat today you know and it was he just he came out you know from from not coming at all to getting like dressed nice and, and being being part of the show he was part of the show and, and that was really cool for us funny you should say that that interestingly enough that i would have to say that's a similar experience that i had barbara it became her job to make sure everybody was seated she she would pair people or put people at pit tables if they came yeah. in alone or whatever yeah it's interesting and so especially for those of us who are the more extrovert of, of the spouse and our spouses often don't have that limelight time nor do they want it this was a really interesting way to give them a little taste of our world in a way that in a bite-sized chunk in in my family we're both introverted so okay <laughs> what yeah and then and then you pass the torch on to 
Maurice and I Tracy. I did. I was so lucky that uh, my friends, Tracy and Maurice, decided that they were, it was a great fit for what they were doing. And I couldn't have, I couldn't have been happier to, to pass it over to them. And, and yeah, they're, there's a power, they're a power couple and everything they do is, is magical. And I have tons of respect for them. And, and I have to say yes to everything you said. I've had the pleasure of staying at their place in Toulon, Manitoba, meeting their kids and their dog, Bruce, who's amazing. And uh, the whole family's amazing. How about we, we bring them on right now? Bring them on. Come on bring down. Them on. There Hello. they are. Hello, Mondays. <laughs> hey, nice t-shirt, nice Maurice. Thank you. Yes. So do you guys have something to say to each other? Well, that's that yours is more figure flattering than mine. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. You know what? It's so great to see you guys. And uh, when we were friends before Mo Mondays and Mo Mondays, I think just took it to another level. And, and it was an interesting transition, right? Because that's when, when I started, nobody knows what it is. So the bar is, is low. Um, but then they had expectations and that's a different, you know, they bring different skill sets and they bring different qualities. They, so it's, it, they had a, that's harder for you guys. I think. Yeah, I think you're, I think you're underselling the expectation. They have, they have huge expectations. <laughs> we have big, big shoes to we fill. Have big shoes to fill. Yeah. And it's just different, right? There, it's not supposed to be the same. It's supposed to be different. And after five years, it probably was time for, because the only thing that was the same in every single show for five years was me. So it was time. It was a time for a change and mm -hmm. no better people to, to hand it over to. Well, Stephanie, tell you what, you hang in there. We're going to come back to you at the end. Is that cool? Yes. <laughs> hang in. That's like the monkey bars. Maurice and Tracy, what was going, let me ask you the same question that, that, I asked uh, Stephanie while she tries to figure out how to turn off her. <laughs> oh, that was a priceless look on her face. What? So you knew what you were going. You knew you were stepping into some big shoes. I know you were you running the I am festival back then. Yeah, you, yeah. you had already started it. You already had an amazing community. You already had uh, a brand of your own, like pe a reputation. What was what was going on in your mind? What what did you see in Mo Mondays that you said, "Yes, we want to be a part of this"? Hmm. Well, we just like after our first, we attended our first show in 2014, and just like fell in love with the format and the way that it just brings people in a community together for just like such good feels. And it really lined up with some of our other work, like the I Am Festival. And so when we heard that it might not be in Winnipeg anymore, we were like, well, no, this has to exist. And uh, so I messaged Marie saying like, Stephanie is like, she's looking to like transition out of Mo Mondays. We don't know like what will happen. Like, what do you think? Yeah, it was ironic. Uh, like we, we had gone to a show in October and I remember sitting at the back of the room and looking at me like, holy crap, has this ever grown? Like we were, we were way, like Stephanie at that point had filled um, the theater and I was just so like, just flabbergasted with how the quality of the stage and everything. And then I'm like, this is totally in alignment with all the other things we do. It's bringing community, it's bringing speakers, it's bringing music. It's like, that's what, that's what we, we were all about. And then what was it? Three months later, Yeah. Stephanie much. like threw something on Facebook and we just it just felt right like yeah. it needed to continue and we just believed in the format and what it does for communities so we're like all right i guess we're I guess we're doing more mondays now <laughs> <laughs> I'm, and i'm so glad you did and you heard when we were talking about stephanie's first show <laughs> yeah. at sam's place so there was funny. a minor catastrophe then and yeah. if i recall there was something like that tell me about what happened yeah, so our first show, we live an hour north of the city. And so our first show, there's a massive snowstorm. It was in March. 
And so a massive snowstorm and they shut down the highways. Mm -hmm. And so we had to, we had to figure out how to get into the city by like navigating through like North rural roads to get there as we had mm -hmm. to get there. Mm -hmm. It was a four and a half hour drive for us to get there. <laughs> uh, uh, four and, and a half hours, whereas normally it's what? An hour. Yeah. An hour. Yeah. And wait, was that the one where you had your snow suit? That's the yes. epic snow suit. Yeah. 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 Yes. yeah. Which That's reminds me of a children's story. <laughs> yes. Uh, somebody's brown snow, so, snow suit, Robert Munch. That's all exactly. I did. Even back then, I remembered. And you showed up in your. Did you come? I remember a little video about you on a four by four. Oh yeah, we well we had to plow out the driveway mm -hmm. so we could get out. So he was mm -hmm. in a snowsuit, gets on the quad with the, the snow blade because mm -hmm. our our driveway is like a quarter mile long, and we got so much snow we couldn't get out with our vehicle. So he had to go and plow first before we could get out. The most significant part about that though, because I think it's I want to make sure that we're on record. <laughs> so I wore that snowsuit and it's like one of those really beautiful 1970s full 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 snowsuit with the white banner. And I did a poll because the audience never lies. Um, because Tracy doesn't totally appreciate like it's not beautiful. The beauty <laughs> of it. And I did a poll, and just to be really clear, the snowsuit is definitely a fashion forward like uh, all the all the ladies decided that they just didn't want to hurt your feelings yeah i just want to get that straight <laughs> you you say you didn't want to hurt his feelings the Tracy? audience didn't want to hurt his the feelings. audience really the, nice people at mo monday there's another recurring feelings. theme we'll find out about that soon but you you actually showed up on stage that night in your snowstorm in your snowsuit yeah yeah, yeah he did that Cool. So <laughs> memorable, memorable moments other I mean, than after that. It was an opportunity to like play, to play. Um, the Mo Monday stage was like, it's an opportunity. Like um, as Stephanie has said, she created a variety show, which meant that we could bring variety. And that meant that I could dress up if I wanted to. And I could surprise Tracy with crazy shit that I would do. Oh, I'm mean, not supposed to swear and get in trouble for it. And that was just lots of fun. Yeah. Yeah. But we did have like a lot of really memorable, there are some really cool memorable moments. We had, we had one of our audience members was, uh, was at one of the shows and watched one of our speakers tell their story about laughter and her experience with laughter. And he was so inspired that he actually went on to, he went and chatted with the speaker about like what she'd gone through. And then he went on to like learn all about laughter yoga and create an entire program that he now delivers across mm -hmm. Winnipeg, wow. just spreading laughter. Wow. So, it's kind of cool. That's mm -hmm. cool. And that's because yeah. of cool. That's very cool. So that would be an example of an impact on a speaker. Mm -hmm. Or the audience. In that and case. the audience. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What yeah other one, one of my other favorites, and, uh -huh. and Stephanie, I think you'll appreciate this because you had mentioned that sometimes you'd stay on people for years and years and years. And one person that you didn't quite get on stage and we got to adopt him as an amazing one of our top volunteers, Mr. Bob Upton. Uh, I know nurses, Bob. Right? Uh, you know Bob. And uh, he came on stage. And to have Bob, who had been holding this like really incredible story, come through and 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 just it, just own it and and express it, it was. It's just incredible. I remember him coming through and he's like, my knees were shaking and no one could tell. He delivered it with such grace, grace and like, and the, the, some of my favorite pictures are the black and whites of Bob sitting there with the microphone where he was just, just throwing it out there. Yeah, that was beautiful. Mm -hmm. Now there are a lot of Mo hosts who work in pairs or teams. And in fact, we're going the next generate the next generation is an example of that but i think you are the only ones so far who have co-mo -ho co hosted together together on stage all right <laughs> and, and we're still married and yeah. you're still yeah. married and i i because I, I know i was on your stage um and i watched the video every every month 
and I see it's almost as if you put your relationship out there on stage for people to say you are so transparent so what's that word what authentic I said <laughs> it's the a word the a word here let me play a little video and then we're gonna come back to you cool we have been together for 17 years and we've gotten pretty good at communicating pretty good pretty good to the point where we can not say anything, but I can feel him seething. <laughs> feel him seething. Sometimes I seethe. So, last night we're lying in bed, and I don't know, I'm, I said something, and I'm going through this little experiment in my life right now, where I'm experimenting with not feeling emotions for a while. <laughs> Dr. Doug thinks that's funny. I've had some stuff happen in the last three weeks that have been kind of shifting, and I'm wondering, like, how are these emotions serving me? So I can switch back and forth. It's a temporary thing, but I'm not as activated as maybe I used to be right now because I just won't feel. So I had said something that got him all upset. I wasn't upset because I'm not feeling things right now. <laughs> and as you might be able to figure out, whether she's deciding to feel things or not right now. Like, like dealing with emotions is like, that's like, I am, I'm like so into it. Like I am like really into it. Like, like talk off the about ticket, his feelings. Like how to appropriately speak and process. Like this is really important stuff. And she has given me indications that I don't really want to feel things right now. We're not talking about feelings. So I'm stuck, right? I'm trapped. What is there left to do but seethe? Hold me, hold me! <laughs> so I'm laying there in bed and I'm ready to just go to sleep and but I can feel this energy next to me, king size bed, so he's like a way the way, like he is clearly pissed at me. And I'm just like, ah, oh, I'm noticing there's something happening over there. And what was your response? You don't want to talk about my emotions. I'm like, you're right. You're right, I don't. <laughs> so 17 years we've been together, and we have fun with some of our fights. Um, it, it ended well. It did end well. You ended up letting me talk about my emotions. Yes, I had my earbuds in. <laughs> Damn, that's harsh. <laughs> I'm so <sorry>. crying right <laughs> now. <laughs> so... That was me. I didn't tell him that one. <laughs> I was giggling all the way through and broke out into a big laughter at the end. Like, did you real say, say, Tracy, I can't, like, did you really, was that the first time you told him you had your earbuds in? Yeah, it was. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Yep. Honest moments at Mo Mondays. Just honest, honest moments. Har and and Maurice, harsh, harsh. I know. <laughs> this is this is what I gotta live with. So Hard. you you heard when Stephanie was talking how her relationship with Randy kind of evolved over time. Obviously, totally different situation as you. But I'm wondering how did your relationship change over time and and perhaps if anything that you know the mo, mo monday's part of it how did that influence hmm. hmm i think it was honestly one of the biggest gifts uh although it didn't feel like it a lot of the times because <laughs> like clockwork you know we would we like we would be fighting either before or or just yeah yeah. In, in preparation um and the the level of trust that we that we graduated to uh to share the stage and between uh, like improv is all about trusting and you're basically always in improv in in a lot of ways so we uh as co-hosts it really pushed us to trust each other i think yeah in a more in a vulnerable way in front of everybody and be okay with that and be yeah. really real about that. Yeah. 
it definitely like Maurice likes to push edges, which I'm not as big of a fan of. I like kind of my comfort zone. And so for us having to navigate those differences and the gifts that he brought to the show and, and like what it was just, it pushed our edges and then forced us to figure it out for the, you know, to, to deliver the experience. And yeah, just like the trust that has to happen when you share a stage and you're there to deliver an experience. It's not about us. Mm -hmm. It's about the people that are there and to be able to like go, we would be fighting an hour drive into Mo Mondays mm -hmm. and we would be like, that's not how it's going to go. You can't say that. You can't say that on stage. <laughs> and then we'd have to like put that all aside and step on the stage and like just fall into the experience of Mo Mondays and just trust each other to, to show up and what the practice of doing that every month mm -hmm. just brought us so close and just kind of keeps like there's a higher reason a bigger purpose that Mo Mondays is about and it was really cool to use that to kind of transcend mm -hmm. um relationship and it's funny you're using the word we fought we fought or we were fighting on all on the way but I mean if 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 couples fight the way you fight we can only you know we, we only wish they would if that's what <laughs> if that's what fighting is then my God, that's a model for all of us to learn from. I don't know. You would have been pretty nervous if you were in that car some days. <laughs> <laughs> but the cars that, and you drove, you're yeah. driving all the time, right? Yeah. Trust, trust. It's all about that trust. <laughs> and, you know, it's interesting because I think about a year ago, you were running a a couples workshop or you you were planning a couples workshop yeah, yeah. and and uh and i bet you had a lot of lessons and insights and maybe what you do is you get people to drive an hour in the middle of a snowstorm together and, and then they need it and then then they need it somebody mm -hmm. once told me is the best way to know if you're compatible if you're thinking of getting married with someone and you, the best, one of the best ways to know if you're compatible is to go down a whitewater river together. Mm. And I'm a paddler, you know, that resonates with me, but I have a feeling that, that it's kind of like the similar thing for you. Yeah. That's a great analogy. Yeah. That, that's basically Mo Mondays for us. <laughs> like it was. Jump in baby. Mm -hmm. Put your helmet on. And then there was, cool. like the level of support and love that we had like through it. It's like didn't at the end of it, we were always just like, "Hey, good job!" Like, yeah, we're, never. We're, yeah. After ev after every show, it was like, "Right, that's why we do this." Mm -hmm. Well, one of the things that I'm always I could feel it even when I was there, I felt it through the video. I could feel it, just how much love is in the room. Mm. And well, Mondays is a special place. Mm -hmm. Well, yes, and. Did you get that? Yes, mm -hmm. and well done. It wouldn't yep. happen were it not for the love that you bring. Mm. So thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for Mo Mondays. Well, are you and I know you're right. You're you're you've already passed on the baton yeah. to the next generation of mohos. Should we bring them on? Yes. They might be stuck in a snowstorm though, so yeah. you better. Oh, come on. It's the end. It's a, <laughs> what month are we in? We're in May, right? Yeah, they didn't get a snowstorm. They got All something right. different. <laughs> Mel and Louise, if you are around, there you are. Hello. Hi. Hi, ladies. Hello. Now, so you, good to see you, you guys. Four, you, two, you two didn't know each other, really. No. no. No, not at all. The first time I actually met uh, Maurice was the handing of the baton yeah. was the was the sign <laughs> that might have even been the last time I was at a coffee shop. Mm, me too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was the and you what's it also Louise is you I'm speaking to Louise slightly more than Mel because Mel has we'll get to that in a second mel mel's had this vision in her head of what mo monday's in and has yet to go louise has only ever been to yours so she's not saddled with the big shoes of stephanie that she's got to filled with got to... maurice and tracy tracy and maurice are there any words of wisdom and wishes that you could pass on to louise and mel 
Hmm. Hmm. I would say keep it going and just show up with like, show up with love and it's amazing what happens. Yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll follow that with like, be, be gentle with each other, like support each other. Um, this is really a team effort, you guys. Well, well, may, the, maybe the, they've got a bit of an advantage perhaps is that they don't sleep together. <laughs> <laughs> There's some distance between us, yes. <laughs> Mel, Mel, what, what's the emo or omi? What, what? Emo, emo. Yeah, we're really happy. It just sounds like we're not, but yes, emo, emo Ontario. They're perfect, like yeah. perfect. All right, Tracy and Maurice, hang in there. Yeah. We're gonna yeah. get you back at the at the at the end, and then we can just do one big happy family thing. Sounds Before good. we sign Sounds off, good. let me have a chat with Louise and Mel. <laughs> All right. So you've heard from Stephanie. You've heard from Tracy and Maurice. You know that Mo Monday's Winnipeg is a very special place. And it's a very special place for me, for like for all the reasons that we heard and then some. Um Never in a million years did I think I would go to Winnipeg, that I would <laughs> fall in love with the people there, that I would I would establish such strong relationships with. If anybody had said to me Winnipeg, I'd say, "Huh?" Right? <laughs> but it's it's it clearly is a city with heart. Now I'm also going to say one thing before I really turn it over to you is that you know, my thing is all about uniqueness, individuality, and letting who you are shine through, blah, 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 all of that stuff. <clears throat> so Mo Mondays plays kind of a, a very delicate dance between, on one hand, staying true to the mission and vision of Mo Mondays, and to a certain extent, the model and the framework of Mo Mondays, but within that, really bringing out the personality, the individuality of the Mo hosts who run it. So every single Mo host that you go to across the country is different because of what the Mo hosts bring. Every Mo sure. location. I think I said that wrong, but anyway, you get it. <laughs> so what was in your mind when you said, hey, let's do this? Geez, I don't know. I guess uh, you know what the for everything that Mo Monday stands for, it just it aligns so well with with. I'm going to speak for Louise for a moment too. For both of our beliefs around connecting humans and how you know we're really not a connected society like we used to be, and there's just that is missing so much in our lives and that chance to interact and learn from each other. And to me, that just that's that's why that's why Mo Mondays for me. Louise? Well, I was, I, I think I was drinking when Mel asked me. Uh, <laughs> to yep. to oh, that reminds me, this is like the first foggy. week I forgot to bring my bourbon down. So thank you for the reminder. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, like, like Mel came to me with this, what I thought was a crazy idea um, until I, um, right, I was like, well, maybe it's not so crazy. It's, um, it's actually stories and, and telling our stories is actually how Mel and I met, um, is at a, a storytelling workshop and, uh, it, and we became fast friends. Um, okay. It seems like 17 years ago now, but <laughs> it was only last year. Um, but like that connection that we have that we formed over finding our story and learning how to tell our stories. Um, that connection is really what what brought us together. So why not be part of a of a whole group of amazing people who want to do that, like all across Canada? Like it's it's absolutely amazing. And I think Louise, I I may have something to do with the fact that you're. Oh no! Wait a minute. I thought I I should. Here's what I I thought I had something to do with the fact that you're part of this little duo. And then I found out later that it was all part of Mel's plan anyway. 
and I, <laughs> yeah, you, you know, you both did that at the same time, like yeah, all it's right? scary. You both did yeah, that so much. All right. uh, so this bodes well, but you know, knowing, of course, no, like when when Mel said to me, you know, I live in Emo, and I said, well, how far is that from Winnipeg? And she said, four hours, four hours, and I and I remember like. It was difficult at times because I know Maurice and Tracy, you know, had to drive one hour, except for the first time when it was four hours in a snowstorm. <laughs> and I'm thinking to myself, I think some Mel needs somebody local. You know, if nothing else, just to look at the venue, make sure the chairs are set up right. All of, all of the stuff that most people have no idea mm -hmm. how much work is involved just getting to the stage. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, I think here you should. And, and Mel said, well, I already have someone. <laughs> In her back pocket. In her, <laughs> oh, oh, okay. Is that how it is? Huh? There is a whole plan. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Yeah. So what's your vision? What's your hope? What's your dream for Mo Mondays when we come out of lockdown? <laughs> yeah. Uh, what were you calling those? Um, small chaos? No, uh, small minor catastrophes. <laughs> minor catastrophe. Yeah, let's let's throw a pandemic in the month that we're gonna try to do a show. Um, <laughs> you know, uh, because this really the wanna... last month was going to be your first show. Yeah. Yep. So anyway, we'll we'll try uh -huh. for something online, I guess, and we'll see how that goes. Um, the fun part is, I guess we get to be creative until we can get it figured out and get together and, and slap a show together. So yeah, we'll have some fun with it. Well, I want to uh, tell you, know, you in all my conversations with you, I, I haven't met you in person, person. And when we can, I hope we're allowed to hug. Uh, <laughs> no, but, but everything I know oh. about you is that I have to say your heart is so in the right place. Thank you. Mel, you're also a DJ. You've done a bit of stand-up comedy. You got, and you're a school teacher, which is all the same thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Depending on your audience, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, um, I've done some MCing, and I absolutely love it. So the opportunity to um, to continue to do that and bring some excitement to the stage and connect with the audience and hopefully empower people to, um, you know, to to live their best life and try something new and be daring and not be afraid to try that. That's kind of what I hope people can take away from Mo Mondays too. Well, cool. How about we bring them all back? Let's bring everybody back. Tracy and Maurice, Stephanie Staples with your beautiful bookcase and your nice hoodie. <laughs> An upgrade from the closet. <laughs> background you have, but I have to say <laughs> thank you. I definitely win for minor catastrophes. So yeah, I've got kids. So uh, this was my only hiding spot. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> oh, the, that's your that's your walk-in closet. That is not really, but it's here. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny, you know. Like everybody is pivoting to virtual. All of a sudden, everybody's a um, an expert in virtual. But anyway, that's a whole other conversation. <laughs> We, you know what, we, 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 we talk a lot amongst us Mo hosts about how to bring the flavor of a live Mo Mondays into a virtual environment. And this Mo TV is not an attempt to do that. It's not, we're not trying to recreate a live Mo Mondays because I don't think you can. And I've spoken to so many people who just say, we're going to be wary about a lot of things. We're going to be careful about a lot of things. But I miss the human to human engagement. Mm -hmm. yep. So, guys and guys and girls and people, and what have you got to say to each other and to the people who are all looking out for the resurgence of Mo Mondays everywhere? We need it more than ever when we get to get back to it. Mm -hmm. Be prepared for crazy, awkward hugs. <laughs> I think that probably mm -hmm. needs to be said. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How do we do it? 
We can do. That was one of our favorite parts of our Mo experience is because the host always does this hug. And so you guys would also get this opportunity to do this hug of the Mo mm -hmm. sandwich. Oh, I was I forgot to say you're right. The Mo sandwich. Explain to what the people what right? that is. Right. So you've got two hosts, one speaker. How do you hug them without it taking a million years for every speaker? And so we we came up with the Mo sandwich, mm -hmm. which is basically putting the speaker in between you and then trying to do a hug and making sure it's not super awkward with like that oh. person being like all like like mm. it's it's so fun mm. to try to figure out live in front of everyone yeah. every time i can attest to that because i was the recipient of one of your mo sandwich hugs you bet mm. and i liked it <laughs> <That's> good <laughs> i want i want another one when i go back to toulon okay deal one waiting for you Absolutely. awesome stephanie anything to say i want a mo sandwich you want the most sandwich. <laughs> We're on, Stephanie. Yeah. <laughs> so there's you know, something for you. To, you know, to think about your story, like whether you're on stage or at Mo Mondays or not, whether it's this year or next year, whenever it is, everybody has a story. And the more we can learn people's stories, the less judgmental we are, the more understanding we are, the more loving and compassionate we can be. So just you know gather what you got in there and share that story whether it's on stage online you know however you have to share it everybody's story is important and impactful and, and needs to be heard mm -hmm. and now you know why stephanie staples is part of the momondays legend well said <laughs> like the third gen the first generation i don't really like first <laughs> the momondays legend all right we are going to Say goodbye to these people. I'm going to tell people what uh, what is coming up. There she is. I'll tell you what we could do. We could do a very quick retrospective of Mo Mondays. I am going to need my glasses for this. Look at this. A little bit of a retrospective. That's Sam's place. That's Stephanie at the theater. There's Tracy and Maurice at another version of the theater that's when i was there that was i'm going the wrong way that when i was there and uh well, i had a great time that was phenomenal that was i th that one of the highlights of my mo monday's experiences uh now i lost my place here we go and this is the king's head did i say that right mm -hmm. and that and so that's it so we're going to leave it there. Next week, come back to Mo TV. We are going to London, Ontario, where you are going to meet Kevin Balmer, who has just done something so amazing in London, Ontario. I can't wait to introduce you to him. If you know him already because you were there, you know what I'm talking about. See you next week. Till then, be yourself. Thank you, everyone. Yeah.